IB, Biology Topic 3.1, Genes.3. The very specific forms of genes are alleles. In this video, we'll be looking at how there can be just one gene, but that this one gene has many versions of it, meaning alleles. The first point that we'll be looking at are that different pairs of heritable factors are alternate forms of the same gene. As you remember from before, a heritable factor is a gene. The person who first started looking at this was Mendel, And we call him the father of genetics. When Mendel first started looking at the different heritable factors that well, he looked at plants, at pea plants, and he would cross them, meaning he would take two parents and he would see later what the child would look like. And when he started with different colors and especially with different uh, sizes of the stem, so he would take two very tall pa parents and cross them and to see what the offspring looked like. He would take two short parents, uh, a short parent and a long, or a tall parent. And depending on the outcome, depending on, for example, does tallness mean something for the offspring? So if a parent is tall, does that change anything? Or if it's red or blue or green or something else? If, in fact, there was some kind of difference in the offspring, depending on the parent he took, then he would say that this characteristic was a heritable factor. And from here, we take the conclusion that different forms of the same gene are also alleles of that gene. Essentially in this case, meaning if tall is an allele of size, so if I have size is the thing I'm looking at, and if my plant is really tall, then tall is an allele of size. Short is also an allele of size because tall and short are just different sizes. So in this case, the gene, the same gene is tall, or sorry, the same gene is size, and then the alleles are going to be tall and short. The next point on the syllabus is that one gene can have more than two alleles. Previously, when I said tall and short, well, there could also be maybe medium, super tall, super short. Now, those are actual alleles to the gene that says how, uh, how tall you are, just your size in general. But we have three examples. The first is that there are three alleles that determine fur color in mice. And the three different colors that you can have are yellow, gray, and black. So these are three different alleles in mice. And so the gene in this case, the gene talks about fur color. So this is the gene. And the three alleles are yellow, gray, and black. The next example are the three alleles that determine uh, blood group. In humans. As many of you may already know, we have three blood groups. There's A, B, and zero, or O. And so there, there are three different alleles that determine these three. In the last example are fruit flies. And I'm not even going to write all of the different alleles that they have, but they have many, many alleles that determine uh, eye color. And similarly, in humans, we have very many alleles that determine exactly which eye color we will have. But it's important to remember that all of these different versions are just versions of individual genes. So there's one gene for fur color in mice, there's one gene for blood group in humans, and there's one gene for uh, eye color in fruit flies, although there are many differences. For example, fruit flies can have many different eye colors, and that's simply because there are many different alleles of that eye color gene. And the final part of genes point three we'll be looking at is that alleles, meaning the different forms of the same gene, occupy the same position on one type of chromosome. This same position, this is called the locus, meaning the position of the gene on the chromosome. Why this is important is because, first off, 
we let's say we have chromosome number one and chromosome number one gives us our eye color but the the genes and the alleles on the chromosome they're not they're just randomly they each have their specific position because the body has to be able to somehow interpret this chromosome and so in this case the eye color gene will always be in the same position and depending on the variation of the gene so the allele it will still be in the same position although it may determine a different eye color and to add on to that most animal and plant cells have two copies of each type of chromosome so most animal and plant cells have two copies of their chromosomes. What this means is that if we have a, a chromosome and on that chromosome there's information about what your eye color is, it's going to be on both of those copies of the chromosome and not only is the eye color gene going to be on both copies but the position that the gene is in is also going to be the same so they will always have the same locus and not only do we expect two copies of these chromosomes the genes being at the same locus can be copies of the same meaning the same allele but they can also be different alleles even though they take up the same position